That's right. You're listening to the WHRB Cambridge. That's 95.3 FM, where it's always hot. That's right. Now, I'm right here with a special guest on the Hip Hop Radio Show. Shout out to the darker side. Her name goes by Chocolate. She is a soul artist who is definitely doing her thing internationally. Well, how you doing, sister? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Oh, okay, cool. So, I had a couple of questions for you. Now, you have a new album. Congratulations on the album. It's hot, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, you know, definitely play a lot of your music. But my first question is, what is your method? What is your creative process? Say you're in the studio, you got the production bumping through the speakers. What's going through your, your head right there in that minute? I mean, do you need some space? Are you thinking about life experiences? Or do you let the music speak to you? So what is the creative process, Chuck? Uh, the music definitely dictates the content and the cadence and things like that. But, I mean, it just depends on, on what I have to work with. Sometimes I don't have any music and I'm hit with a thought or an idea or something. I don't have to, like, pull off the freeway and jot it down or something right, like that. Right. Or, you know, drive with my knee while I write it out. <laughs> right, um, right. But if I've got music, pretty typically, I just I, I let the music sort of dictate the song and the mood of the music and the mood of the song. So. Okay, cool. Now, my next question for you is, we got a little glimpse of your creative process. Do you do anything else? Like, do you also produce or are you songwriting for other artists as well as being a song a songwriter for yourself and a singer? Um, I have a real I have a real intense urge to um, write for other um, singers because I write songs very 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 quickly. I can write a song in a matter of moments, maybe five ten That's minutes, good. pretty typically. And so I have an urge to write for other artists just because of that right there. But um, I've lately been asking my producer to teach me how to make beats because I do right, hear right. things that I can't quite get to because I'm not a producer. Right, and I'm sure that so, gets on your nerves. You're like, ah, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's like, like, how do I get it out? That particular sound that you might be looking for in your own work. Exactly. Okay, awesome, awesome. So where are you from originally and what early influences uh, musically did you have? I was born in Seattle, Washington, and I was raised in Southern California. And uh, my mom, she didn't really let me listen to a lot of worldly music. I could only listen to gospel, and because that was all I could listen to, I rebelled and didn't listen to much of anything at all growing up. So um, my influences, I think, um, are more categorized, like you know, by life. And you know, I went to church a lot, so at church, things like that. And um, I don't know, later on, I feel like I am a, a huge connoisseur of like Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye and just people who um, wrote music from their from, from a space of experience right. and intense emotion. And so, um, yeah, artists that, are in the same vein, you know, right. Sam Cooke, Isaac Hayes, right. yeah, people who wrote real good boogie down. Just, just awesome soul music from yeah. the heart, unadulterated soul music. Yeah. Um, now, earlier, you, you talked a little bit about, you know, in that answer, you said you listen to uh, gospel music in your background. So my next question is, would you say that uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ had an influence or your faith had an influence on you going into singing? And at the same time, uh, do you think that in some ways you're a minister in a sense, that you're here to spread the gospel of love? Maybe not so much as in... The terms of, you know, believe in Jesus Christ, but it's gospel music in the sense that you're promoting love in your music. Well, I, I mean, I think someone else would say that quicker than I would, oh, but okay. I definitely do feel like God said, you know, I'm, I'm going to use you, and you're going to be the vessel, so I need you to prepare yourself, you know? Um, so in, in, in that being the case, I feel like I have a responsibility within my music to be truthful and to be honest right. and to be very transparent so that my experiences are just not my own but that through the music other people are are learning or feeling or relating right. to them because of that. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't say minister. That's a big responsibility, but, <laughs> you know, someone else might, yeah. All right, all right. So just wrapping things up real quick. I just definitely want to say I'm a, a fan of yours. Now just getting to talk to you and, and see... Um, where your perspective is on music so uh, the last question is tell the people where they may be able the darker side audience where they may be able to get your work online or in the stores or wherever just go do the promo thing real promo quick. thing okay right. so my newest 
first record will be released April 21st. It'll be the sophomore record. Um, the actual debut is self-titled, and it's available at CD Baby, Amazon, um, you know, Borders Books and Cafe, things like that. You can get it at Dusty Grooves. I'm online at chocolatemusic.com, and that's C-H-O-K-L-A-T-E music, all one word. Um, dot com and I'm on MySpace slash listen the number two chalk so listen to C H O K and listen to chalk y'all that's right the darkest side any any shout outs real quick uh, just shout out to God and <laughs> right. to everybody who likes the music and to my family back home Vitamin D and my manager Ricardo Frazier and that's it. All right, you're listening to Hope the Anointer. That was chocolate, the wonderful, lovely, sexual chocolate. <laughs> we're, 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 representing, we're representing the darkest side, all right? Talk to you later.